You know, in this Parenting Me Too project that I'm doing, I find it really easy to focus on the playful permission, um, even even a little of the darker things like uh, working on my shame, eradicating my shame and my self-judgment. But when it comes to setting boundaries and limits, I have a lot of resistance. I have a lot of resistance to setting boundaries and limits for myself. And I imagine some of you out there can relate to that and even can relate to that if you're a parent, like setting boundaries and limitations for your children or whatever. But this is one of the most important things that we can do to self-parent ourselves and until we start self-parenting ourselves, our dreams cannot actualize. So setting boundaries and limits, a really easy thing any of us who are doing this or even watching this right now could do is set limits and boundaries with our technology. Valuing presence, like the only way that our dreams can fully manifest into form is if we're actually present with our lives and able to receive the lives that we've created up to this point. So we have to be able to set limits and this is an easy way to start. So I'm going to schedule, I'm going to say this out loud, what I'm going to do. I'm going to schedule phone breaks. So I'm going to have an email that says I'm not available right now. My messenger is going to have an automated reply set up. Um, since I work on social media, I can set up automated posts for for my social media so I didn't even have to think about it. I just plan it in advance and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to have at least at least one day a week without my phone and without the computer. At least one. I'd like to get up to three. I'd love to get up to three days a week without my phone or my computer and it's completely possible. It just takes being a really strong in my solar plexus. That's what this strengthens inside of ourselves is the center of will, the center of determination, the center of actually being able to sustain of endurance, of actually being able to sustain our lives energetically, financially, whatever. Oh, this also boosts our charisma, this third center when we are able to set limits and boundaries with ourselves. If you saw my video on enjoying microdosing cannabis, well, I really liked it. And so I started really going full on and I just let myself go so deep into that cannabis experience for three days. It's like, I'm gonna have as much as I want for three days. Well, after the third day, I felt like shit. <laughs> my throat was hurting and I was like, okay, well, this is, and it wasn't even fun anymore. You know, it was just like, oh, this isn't even fun anymore. So I let my inner teenager just go wild, just like fully experience what it's like to not have boundaries and limits. And then she, my inner teenager, came back to me as my inner parent. I was like, okay, that's not a good idea. Let's have some boundaries and limits around cannabis use. About only when the baby's sleeping, maybe like two times a week, two or three times a week would probably be a healthy amount and a small amount once a day on those days. And maybe like once a month I could fully journey with it and just get really high and vision and pray and meditate and doodle and, and you know, write and like have a full day of medicine journey. Maybe once a month. Maybe that, maybe that would even feel like too much. Maybe that would need to be like once a quarter, once a season. Really intentionally having a medicine journey with it since that is fun sometimes to do. So that was my inner parent. Sorry, that truck was noisy a minute ago. That was my inner parent dialoguing with my inner teenager. And in this way, I'm integrating my full self. I'm not denying the part that wants to just, you know, get sound. No, that's not what it is. It's like, I'm a medicine woman and a part of my soul actually needs to journey with medicine every so often, deeply. And not to shame the use of, of any sort of plant medicine that could have healing benefits spiritually or psychologically or physically or whatever. So limits and boundaries, limits and boundaries. What are you going to set for yourself? Can you imagine a limit or a boundary that might help to contain you that might help to contain and 
hold your energy. A container is like, you know, our bodies are a container for our souls. Isn't that, that's amazing. Our bodies are a container. Our bodies are vessels for life energy to move through. This is incredible. So we have this container of our body, but we also need this mental container, you know, and that requires setting limits and boundaries with yourself. Yours might be around food or like sugar or, or like just wanting to gorge on something. That's a really common one. Um, one, definitely the media, the social media, the phone, the internet, the computer, mm. alcohol for a lot of people, alcohol to relax, having some limits around that. Like it might be, I'm going to have this six nights a week, one beer. Okay, that's all I'm gonna have. I'm gonna stick to that. And you know, in some cultures, I've actually been to a culture in Panama, in the San Blas Islands, this tiny 360 islands. I went into a plant medicine ceremony where they were using vodka, for real. The Smirnoff started dropping crates of vodka in these indigenous lands. And because they're indigenous people, they started journeying with it. It was intense. They were like purging demons with the alcohol. So if you, if you do struggle with alcohol, you might need to purge some demons. Like use the medicine for what it's intended to do, or else, or else it becomes a poison, a toxicity. Any plant medicine. So I'm going to say that since I have been talking about it here, that you have to be really intentional. It's strong, and if you're going to use technology, which is a potent fire medicine, or or plant medicines that could be intoxicant in whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you just have to have some limits and boundaries with yourself. So be your own big person, be your own inner parent. That's what I'm talking about. To embody your authentic voice and to actualize your soul's dream or your destiny, to actualize your destiny. I'm Destiny Love and my, that's my work. It's myembodiedvoice.com and I'm a mama. And I'm doing it. And I'm mama myself. So if you need some support, reach out to me.